Well, I start with a Kepsler Rexis and a Falco Plus IOL. I usually would do a lens bearing vitrectomy, but in this case a turtle detachment is present, so I do a combined vitrectomy. Next step is interior vitrectomy. The lens removal allows a complete removal of the interior vitreous. Here you see the total PVR detachment. The first step is a rexis of the posterior vitreous, or you can say a rexis of the posterior hyaloid. The posterior vitreous is often detached um, in the periphery. It is often attached at the nasal pole and it is often almost always attached at the posterior pole. pole. So now you see, now I'm opening the posterior hyaloid. I'm using a 27 gauge vitreous cutter. Here you see the opening uh, with the blood staining. Now I'm working with a scleral depressor. Always be careful uh, in those places where you don't see the um, retina because you may injure the retina and cause a big break. Now you see better the opening of the posterior vitreous. The aim of diabetic surgery is the complete removal of the posterior vitreous. The posterior vitreous, or to be more exact, the posterior hyaloid, causes the tractions and the solution, uh, surgical-wise, is the complete removal of the posterior hyaloid. You can see that in this posterior pole, pole there is a fibrotic um, constriction of the vitreous. This will be tricky to remove. So now first work your way down from the periphery to the center. In diabetic retinopathy we start in the periphery and work our way towards the posterior pole. Uh, be careful here at this place. Um, you might injure the retina so always check that the posterior hyaloid is detached from the retina before you cut. I'm detaching the posterior hyaloid to be sure that I will not injure the retina. I continue to um, with the posterior hyaloid rexis. At this part, which is the nasal part, the posterior is attached, and here a rexis is not possible. This is typical for the nasal side. Next step is the central peeling. I um, stain the um, vitreous with the membrane dual from DORC. Next step is removal of residual vitreous gel.
when this fibrotic part has to be carefully removed in, open, in order to open up the retina. If you simply pull at this um, fibrotic um, vitreous, you will create a huge tear in the retina. So we must work slowly and have patience. Um, you can see that I use a lot the 27 gauge vitreous cutter. Um, this is possible because the 27 gauge cutter is very small and very good for diabetic eyes. But now we have to continue with uh, um, bimanual instruments. This is uh, the lens from Oculus, which is very nice for these cases. Uh, it works peripheral and centrally very nicely. Um, now I work by manual with forceps in the left side. And a clomp spatula in the right side. Clomp spatula comes from the company iTech in UK. The forceps left is the uh, ultra peel forceps from Dork. So I'm trying to dissect um, this uh, thick fibrotic membrane from the underlying retina. Um, bimanual peeling and patience are the key to success. These cases take time and you must work slowly in order to prevent to induce retinal um, holes. Now I'm changing to a um, individual scissors. Um, this is a 27 gauge scissors from a dog. Curved scissors. You need for this kind of surgery you need a forceps, scissors, um, then a blunt instrument, knopf spatula, or something else and a vitreous cutter. Um, I continue with um, removal of um, pussy hyaloid at this area. You see that, we, that, that you have to work from the periphery to the center in diabetic cases. There's also a rupture which has to be treated with a laser later on. And again, careful removal of the posterior hyaloid. You need scissors, you need a forceps, and you need a blunt dissecting instrument. I like very much the 27 gauge cutter for diabetic cases because you can um, do a lot of manipulating and cutting with this which is cutter. This is not possible with a 23 gauge and it's not possible with a 25 gauge cutter. Okay. 
for me it is a real time changer to have this small cutter in these difficult diabetic cases. If you do the cutting of course you have a very low aspiration and a low cutting frequency for example 200 cuts per minute and 200 millimeter mercury aspiration so there's a very strong attachment on the nasal side I already said that the posterior hyaloid is attached on the complete nasal side which is typical for uh, proliferative diabetic eyes uh, I'm using now a forceps and scissors you see that this is really necessary in some ca in some parts of the peeling like here you need forceps you cannot use a cutter and you also see clearly the the um, dissecting plane between the posterior hyaloid and the retina so you can in the most cases avoid retinal ruptures I think I need uh, now knob spatulas so uh, I decide to to change my 227 gauge uh, trocast to 25 gauge um, because I want to use the 25 gauge knob spatula from uh, iTech UK which is only 25 gauge and not 27 it's a very nice uh, dissecting blunt instrument so now I'm trying to um, elevate this fibrotic cake right hand knob spatula left hand is the forceps and you see it is um, getting loose now so and now we have actually succeeded um, in removing this um, fibrotic part so uh, now I'm using the cutter removing the residual attachments between this fibrotic cake and the retina also trim this um, membrane with the cutter next step is uh, using a scissors to remove um, the final part of attachments and now I can cut the whole fibrotic cake and remove it with the vitreous cutter I do with this with pleasure so next step is a diathermy of the retinal ruptures
And the next important step is the injection of perfluorocarbon to attach the attached retina, the detached retina. You can see that the posterior pole is attached. So now I'm working again on the nasal pole. Um, I already said that the posterior vitreous is attached at the nasal part. And the removal here is, of course, difficult. So I'm working now with club spatula and the forceps. The aim of uh, diabetic surgery is the complete removal of the posterior hyaloid. Um, because removing the posterior hyaloid, you remove all the tractions. Uh, if you remove the posterior hyaloid, the retina will um, reattach because diabetic cases are tractive detachments. The posterior hyaloid contracts and uh, induces a detachment. In this case, you also have a few ruptures, but they are secondary. You see, I'm still working at the nasal pole. trying to remove the posterior hyaloid which is firmly attached. You need bimanual peeling, um, otherwise you will not succeed. I continue now with um, a peripheral shaving of the vitreous base. Note also the subretinal fluid coming through the rupture. This detachment is um, a few months old, so it's an old detachment and the patient is informed about the poor prognosis. It is a type 1 diabetic with uh, low compliance. The eye was not treated with one laser effect. Um, I asked the referring clinic to inject anti-VEGF one month prior surgery. There's also a discussion if anti-VEGF induces um, a sort of crunching, a progression of a detachment uh, in my experience, I use anti-VEGF Avastin since uh, 2003. I never experienced this crunching, which you can read in literature. So I'm very free and happy to use Avastin one month prior surgery. It makes surgery much easier. It reduces bleeding 
and um, the post inflammation is less. I'm working again on this nasal pole. Now I'm injecting more perfluorocarbon. There's a traction on the um, superior arcade, which I try to remove with a membrane pick. I work under perfluorocarbon, which is easier. If you want to stay in the membrane, you must remove the perfluorocarbon, stay in the membrane with membrane dual, um, inject again perfluorocarbon, and then do the peeling. quite a firm membrane. The next important step is laser photocoagulation. Um, again important is here to do a bimanual laser photocoagulation because you have to treat from the arcades up to the ora serrata. This is only possible with um, scleral impression. So in the left hand, um, you have the depressor, in the other hand you have the laser. I cannot treat the complete retina, so I inject now air to um, remove the subretinal fluid. Now I'm removing the subretinal fluid in order to um, make a complete laser coagulation. Removing perfluorocarbon, removing subretinal fluid. And now a complete laser is possible, co is possible because the retinal is fully attached. And again, uh, we work bimanual with the presser and laser coagulation in order to um, laser coagulate up to the ora serrata. Next step is injection of 0 0.2 milliliter avastine. And the next step is injection of 1000 centistoke silicone oil. This is the final air bubble. And I close the sclerotomies with a Vicryl 8O suture. Even in case of 27 gauge. The surgical time is 1 hour 45 minutes. 
Yes, I would really recommend this 27 gauge cutter for these difficult cases. I treated the other eye with a, a laser, Leo and an Alia injection. In the follow-up, one day post-op, the retina is attached. Three weeks post-operative, the retina is detached focally, superior and on the nasal side. Uh, note the subretinal band superior and detachment on the nasal side. One week later I performed a second vitrectomy. I have here the one day post op pictures and the retina is attached. I will post the second video uh, too. Thank you very much.